Good morning guys, welcome to another episode. Guys, I have a confession to make. I've been a naughty boy. I uh, went fishing a couple of days with the boat for the first time in 2020 and I didn't bring you guys along. I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, the first time it's because I wasn't sure if it would end up being a disaster or not and it actually ended up being pretty cool. And the second time, I just was not having a great day and I didn't want to film. I just didn't feel like filming. I just wanted to focus on fishing, but I regret it because that day was filled with some hilarious moments and some insanely huge fish. So today I promise I'm gonna bring you guys, we're gonna go fishing, we're gonna go in the same place that I went the last time where we caught some giant, giant walleye. Um, and I'm gonna teach you guys today how to fish for pre-spawn walleye in very early spring, late winter. Uh, it's end of March, the season is about to close in a few days, so I'm gonna uh, show you guys the tips, tricks, what we look for, how it's done. So if you stick around, I promise you today we're gonna catch some Mondo walleye, maybe some of the biggest walleye you've ever seen, all right? So let's do it, let's pack it up, get the boat behind me. Uh, we're gonna go for a nice long drive and hit the St. Lawrence, all right? Let's do it. You're starting to get water in the exhaust now. There. That's it. There, one more. Okay, see ya. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure that the front end was a little bit. All right, guys, we made it out on the water. As you saw, the uh, launching of the boat was a little sketchy, but uh, well, we made it. <clears throat> What's happened is the water is extremely high up and the ramp is quite flat. So what happens is the ramp gets completely flooded, but only with about four inches of water, and the actual drop off for the boat is very far out. So you pretty much got to drown the truck by the time you get the boat in there, but we, we finally made it. So obviously we're out here on the St. Lawrence. We're out here in uh, that good old heavy current. So the key, really to finding these fish is to find slack water. You want to get out of the heavy current. The water is still super cold. It's like 32 degrees. So the fish are not going to be hanging out in heavy current. These are pre-spawn walleye. So the first key is really to find that slack water. Find cuts, find areas where there isn't any really, really heavy current. And from there you're going to want to try the different depths. Generally, you know, you're going to want to fish anywhere between, who knows, 10 to 40 feet. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and try all the different depths and you're going to want to work. If, if you've seen my other videos, I talk about using the current to your advantage. Well, you're going to use the lighter current and the wind to just drift and jig. And you, you know, you can use heavy jigs, you can use some lighter jigs, anywhere between half an ounce or a one ounce jig. Or you can go with a drop shot, which is what I'll be doing today because, you know, I just love using the drop shot. It's my confidence bait. So we're going to work with that and uh, see what happens. So stay tuned and we'll give some other tips as we uh, as we move along because you really do have to practice the drifts. It's something that I'm forcing myself and that Mark is fishing with me. He forces me to do it to learn how to drift and, and get your boat control uh, really, really dialed in because it's super important on these river systems. It's not like a lake. You need to be able to understand wind and current and, and eddies and all that stuff to get the proper drift. So we'll talk about that as we continue to fish, all right? So let's get at it. Let's catch us some fish and uh, start loading the boat. Another tip for you guys while we're driving around like this, the dirtier the water, the colder it is. We gotta wait till the sun comes out and really beats on it for a while. And we can actually see it on the graph, uh, which shows temperature. As soon as we move into clearer water, it's actually warmer. So we're fishing this area because there's a lot of slack water and we know that it's good for walleye in this season, but it, the water's filthy. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go try cleaner water. We're gonna go look for some cleaner water. Uh, because of the way the currents are, there's sections where it's cleaner. We're gonna go try that out and see if we can get it. And it's interesting because you can see where the currents hit and it just immediately goes from chocolate milk to clear. It's amazing. So uh, let's go try that out. A fish. Keeper? Oh yeah, big time. Is it a big one? Yep. All right, 
There it is. Don't need the handle. There you go. Booyah. Look at that beauty. Booyah. There he goes. There we go, guys. First fish of the day on the second drift. Another keeper. Got a win from in, just flipping it. There we go. Nice. You mad now, huh? Here you go, guys. Another beauty. Another keeper. All right, guys. So as I mentioned, we're pointing upstream. And the wind is hitting us. And we're just controlling the drift. So the easiest way to do it is really to just watch your line and check and see where it is in reference to the boat. So if the line starts moving that way, we adjust the trolling motor accordingly. And you just do it in little bursts. You don't put this thing on 10 and give it good shots. Just little adjustments at a time, it's all you need. So for me, I'm just moving my eye between where my line is in the bow and looking at the chart. And that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna keep an eye on my depth and adjust as I go. And usually I get so into it that I actually keep an eye on the sonar, keep an eye on this, that I forget that we're actually fishing. And all of a sudden I'll get a bite and it's like, oh, Jesus. And then I lose the fish because I panic. <laughs> Does that sound about right? <laughs> and as we go, I just keep hopping the bait up. Keep hopping that drop shot off the bottom. You do not want to let it drag because there's a lot of rocks down there. And uh, we're going to lose a lot of weights if I just let it drag along. So we just hop. And the current is actually giving the uh, bait some movement, so I don't really need to twitch it around like crazy. So we just pass the fish on bottom. And you're going to look for wall when you're looking for walleye, at least here, the key is to look for fish that are hugging the bottom. So if you see suspended fish, uh, you know, five feet off the bottom, it's not walleye. We're really looking for marks that are hugging the bottom constantly want to be adjusting your depth so if we get a little deeper let out a bit of line now the other disadvantage here is that the water is the color of chocolate milk so that pretty much means I got to hit the walleye on the head for him to see it and go for it there's a nice signal there's a nice mark that's a big one that is a big one right there Let's see if we can get him that's a big one on the screen you guys can see that right there. Man, did I? Did we just pass? We passed over a nice one. That's one of the bigger signals I've seen on the bottom. It's your 10 pound mama. She's in a bad mood. Fuck me! Iceberg right ahead! Over there. That's fine. Can't. So another technique you guys can do if you're sick of trying to drift, we're hitting icebergs. So uh, yeah, that's another fun thing we're doing. We have to dodge ice coming down the river. So another fun thing you can do is uh, actually just put the motor on spot lock and cast up, up river and let it drift back down. So that's what we're going to give a try, uh, try and do over here. We've been pretty successful on the spot in the past doing that. So we're going to give drifting a rest and try this out. Marky Mark is on. Ooh. That's, that's Ooh. Exactly the technique that we Oh, there you go. Take him. There we go. We'll take him. Thank you very much. Got him. Spank you very much. Spank you very much. Oh, it's a big dog. This is a. Keep his head down. Now lift. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Nice fat fuck. There you go guys, there's a nice walleye, too big to keep. Sorry, camera wasn't running when I caught him, but there you go. Two casts, two fish, it's my style. Oh guys, we got another one on, another good one. 
That's two casts. This is another good one. The mamas are coming out. Oh, catfish! <laughs> is it a catfish? <laughs> we got a big channel cat. <laughs> Check that out. There you go, guys. <laughs> got us a dirty catfish. A dirty bar butt. So that's two fish now. Uh, where we're spot locked and we're just casting upstream and we're just letting it come down. But what we're doing is we're tipping the hooks with dead minnows. Here in Quebec, we're not allowed live minnows. You're not allowed live bait. You can like except for like worms. Are catfish? That's a big Ooh. one. <laughs> okay, Mark just hooked into a mondo. Oh, I told you he got the drop shot. Yeah. You want to weigh this one? Holy oh, jeez, guys, look at the size of this walleye. Mongo. One, two, three. There you go. Boom. Chaka -la -la -la. Boom! Yo, duty. <laughs> Alright, guys, so I retied a drop shot. I broke off, retied. Scent really seems to be the key, so I'm going to give some gulps a shot. See how these go. We have to turn off the spot lock? I'll turn off the spot lock. No. Oh. <laughs> Your hook, they definitely came out. That might be a 10 pound. I don't know what happened to my camera, it just died. Mm. Woo. That's a big one. Alright, guys, we're going to weigh this one. This is a big one. This is a big one. Don't drop Look it. Look how fat she is. Holy jeez. Look how fat she is. Oh my god. She's not long. That's not long. 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 Yeah. She's not a 10. Nowhere's near it. She's like seven and a half. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. I don't think she's eight. Eight three. Good. Okay. Eight pounds, three ounces. That'll work. That's a big mama. Time. Beautiful. Put her back. See ya. There she goes. Oh. That is a mongoloid. That was a donkey. What was she on? The jig or the drop shot? I don't know. Drop, drop shot? Yeah. Alright, so Mark just unloaded another one. Just to show you guys, Mark's got like a jig for his weight at the bottom and he's got a drop shot. And this is what he's running on the drop shot. It's just basically a paddle tail chartreuse white jig like this. That's what he's running. That's that's what the big boys are going after. The two big mamas that we caught were both on the drop shot. So yeah, and that's what I got as well. So let's see if we can get another one. Mark, you got another one on here? Drop shot again. Yep. Hmm. That's a that's a keeper. I believe so. You got yourself a keeper there. You want to leave some fish for the rest of us, maybe? So as you guys can tell, Mark is hogging all the fish. That's the way Mark fishes, he just hogs everything. So I figured we'll switch the camera up to this side so you guys can just see Mark in action because I ain't catching squat. Oh, am I blocking the view? Sorry. Hey -oh. oh, here we go. Oh, Mark's got himself another Goliath. Here we go. Oh, this is a big fish. In the butt. Oh. Oh. No, no, yeah, here you go. He probably took a swipe at it. Got him in the That's chin. a beauty. Another nice one. There you go. Got him? I had him. <laughs> Great, over my lunch, thanks. Wow. Yeah, look at that beauty. Porcosaurus Rex. Alright, let's see that Mondo. Oh, that's a nice photo right there. No, it's 615. Okay. Got it. There you go. See ya. There she goes. Boom! Beast! So that was 615, so that's a 7 pounder. Will we beat 8 pounds? Look at Mark is just wrecking them over here. I catch in the morning, Mark catches in the afternoon. And Mark ain't sharing.
Say it is. No way. Yep. Smaller. It's the cooler. I'm telling you. Keeper? This might be a keeper, but it's small. Look at, look at that. Look how pale this fish is. Here you go, guys. All right, guys, I made a little change, okay? I did a color change. I went to an orange and dark red with some sparkle in it on the drop shot. And I put a little bit of uh, liquid mayhem on there. I actually got this. I got a couple of these from uh, Mystery Tackle Box. Second cast I hooked up after like two hours of catching nothing. So, Let's see if that continues. Come on. Whoop a doo! Yep. There's another one. There's another one. Things are looking good for this bait. He's got tons. Look at this. Look at all the uh, worms in his tail. All right, see you, dude. Off he goes. Well, guys, a little bait change, making a difference. Oh, that was another one. That was another one. Oh, Mark's got another tank. He got upset that I caught a couple of dinks. I gotta just keep saying every cast is my last oh, cast. Exactly. There's another tank. Here. So guys, this is the third time that Mark says this is my last cast with this bait and hooks onto a giant. Oh, this is a big fish, but I'm not, I'm not playing on this. There you go. Oh, oh me like Mongo. There Mongo you go. Good, man. Mongo good. Boom. <laughs> Jeez. Mark with another tank. Thanks. <laughs> Jeez, seriously. Thanks for the memories. <coughs> there you Ooh. go. He woofed that down nice. Uh huh. He wasn't messing around. I'll grab a quick pick. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. So far, so good. It's been not a fire day. Fishing isn't exactly on fire, but we've been catching some tanks. Well, correction, Mark has been catching the tanks. Um, we did settle on just kind of using the spot lock and throwing it uh, up river. Uh, but Mark, what he did was Mark's got a heavier jig on. He's actually throwing down and slowly bringing it up and bouncing it off. And he's kind of working this big ledge and it seems like the big mamas are all parked up there. And uh, he's just racking them. And every time he says last cast, he hooks up. Like it's kind of become a, a fun little game. Uh, I did a, what's that? Last cast. Last cast, okay, here we go. We're gonna witness it in the background. So uh, yeah, and that's it. So I've been working the drop shot. I did a couple of color changes and it looks like a color change to an orange with some of that liquid mayhem. Uh, quickly got a couple more fish after two hours of nothing. Uh, but now again, it seems to have died down, but we'll get back at it. Um, the wind is kind of starting to pick up a little bit more. Uh, we got like a northwest wind. But uh, the old Minn Kota is keeping us in place and uh, we're going to keep going at it, see if we can catch us a, uh, we're looking for a double digit fish. Uh, the guys behind us, and there's boats, there's several boats behind us all working this area, this very popular spot. Where they're fishing it's a little deeper and it seems like at the 35 foot mark it's smaller fish. Uh, we're not looking to load the boat on small fish, we're looking for bigger fish. So that's why we're in, we're working like a 20, 15 to a 25 foot depth. Uh, and that's where the bigger fish seem to be. So uh, yeah, we're not looking for darts, we're looking for those big trophy fish. All right, let's keep it up. Oh, there's a good one. That's a good one. That's a keeper. Oh. Oh snap! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's about time we got us a real fish. That's a big one. Oh, dude, we gotta weigh this thing. Look at the size of this thing. <gasps> Holy shnikey. There you go, guys. Boom. See ya. Off she goes. Booyah. Guys, you wanna laugh? So I just caught that uh, seven pound walleye. Six pounds, 12 ounces, and by the time I put everything away, look at the boats. There's a boat there, 
I blame you. And this guy, these guys just moved in super close. With the rubber ducky? With the, now it might look far on camera, but it's actually not. Like I could easily cast into all of these boats that are around oh, us right now. We can't cast anymore. Yeah, one of them even blocked Mark where he was casting and, and spot lock. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on again. Ooh, on again, baby. That's a keeper. Mm -hmm. Right over here, thank you. <laughs> Here's a nice keeper, guys. This orange jig is just killing it. Killing it. The key has become, obviously the bait switch has become a big deal but I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting the current carry it and I'm just bouncing it off the bottom. It's unbelievable. You do, there's nothing to do. All I'm doing is making sure I have bottom contact and not a ton of extra line out. Exactly, yeah. Like Mark said, it, they're just, the fish are super cold, metabolism's way down. They're not gonna go after anything unless it's right in front of them going slow, then they'll take it. And the water's filthy, you know, they can't see it. It's, it's gotta hit them in the face, basically. But this color change has made all the difference in the world. It's crazy. And maybe a little bit of that liquid mayhem. Remember you said it? It's weird. There's aren't other there boats here. <laughs> the days that we're here, there was nobody here. Remember when you were saying that, Mark? You remember that? I also told you. I don't think this is a keeper. That looks awfully big for a keeper, Mr. Mark. <laughs> so at this point, there's like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's twelve people fishing on shore right off the point in front of us. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boats out here. Counting fucking ducky? I counted the rubber ducky boat as well. All right, guys, it's about that time. It's uh, hitting almost four o'clock, so we're going to head out of here. Let's go back to the ramp and we'll do a quick little wrap up, all right? But uh, somebody down here. Certainly caught the monsters. Uh huh. We were there for the picking. Well, they were definitely there for the picking. All right, let's head back to the ramp. There you go, guys. Check out this, you know what, show. There you go. This guy's got a forest fire going on. Oh, why are you going in so close? It's I said, troubleshooters at the ramp. I love that. That's another. That's one of my favorites wow, too. Man. Yeah, like his, his exhaust is completely underwater. He's got it up to the doors. That's really risky. The potential for disaster is actually pretty good right now. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Oh my god, oh my god, what is this guy doing? There go the bugs. <laughs> oh my god. Mark's favorite maneuver. Mark loves doing this with my, with my truck. He goes out in the water on the roundabout because it's so flooded that the roundabout is there, but it's flooded. So he just drives the truck out in the middle of it. <laughs> like you have to back the truck so far that you're not even touching the concrete ramp of where the boat launch is. Alright, we're gonna try not to fall in the water like a moron. Always exciting taking the boat off a flooded ramp. All right, guys, that's it. You like the uh, circus over at the ramp? <laughs> There's always something going on at the ramp. Anyways, listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you really saw what we focused on, and that was looking for slack water, whether it was dirty or clean. We kind of just moved around. We found the depth that found big fish on. That was key. We wanted big fish, and we found them in lower depths at around 20 feet. So we found out where they were kind of keying up, and then we just spot locked, and we used the current to bring it towards us. So we drifted around everywhere looking for fish, using drop shots and jigs, 
we use like a half ounce to three quarter ounce jigs and drop shot weights and uh, we just found those fish and that was key so look for slack water it's really 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 important they are not going to be in the current so if you're looking for walleye big walleye you're going to get out of the current and look for that slack water super important okay hope you guys really enjoyed this episode i had a blast that is my new personal best walleye so this was not a wasted day at all it was awesome and we managed to take home seven keepers okay so that's it guys thanks a lot don't forget subscribe like all that good stuff i really hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you next time all right peace